my name is Stephanie. I'm one of the crime scene investigators for Coral Springs Police Department. And in honor of National Forensic Science Week, I'm going to give you a lab tour. In our CSI building, we have two stories, two levels. And on our first level, we have our laboratories. Our first lab we have here is our photo lab. Inside of our photo laboratory, we photograph different evidence. We process evidence as well and submit them through here to the evidence unit. We have computers, we have forensic capturing systems, and we also have different types of measuring scales and also all of our evidence submission packages. And this is our digital lab. For here, we usually do video analysis and also Photoshop for latent photography. We have our printer here where we print out the latent photos. So now we're gonna go into our trace lab. In here is where we do all of our trace lab work with DNA, ALS photography, and MVAC. So we have different types of equipment here. This is our MVAC right here. Um, we use it for uh, DNA for spent shell casings or DNA on clothing. We have done it for both of them. Think of like a vacuum. So like we'll use this part and we also have like a different types of like chemicals to go with it so that it can extract the DNA while using water and also some chemicals that we have there to go with it. So one of the technologies or equipment that we have here is the Crime Light Auto, which is basically like a forensic capturing system that we use for processing evidence. Uh, it pretty much has a lot of different parts of it that allows us to process the evidence. For example, we can do blood detection, uh, we can also do alternate light source, which is a light source that allows us to fluoresce different types of fluids. And this is one of our new technologies that we were able to get, which allows us to process our evidence more efficiently when it comes to crime scenes. And now we're going to go into our processing lab. So in here, uh, we have different lockers and cabinets. So as you can see, we have all of our names on our lockers, which is where we put our evidence in, and everyone has their own key to their locker. Uh, we know that we cannot turn in evidence as efficiently, as fast as possible, and some days we're here only to a certain time, so we keep it in our lockers, and then the next day we were able to submit it into evidence after processing. So I can give you a look into my locker. It's empty, but just so you can see it. and this is where we put all of our evidence. That means I don't have any evidence, you guys. <laughs> we also have a training locker, which we try our best to continue with our training to make sure that we are up to date when it comes to processing. We have different types of chemicals in there to practice on. And so here we also do our latent processing as well. We have our super glue fuming chamber which is for latent processing. And then we also have our fuming chamber here for drying purposes. We also have a heat presser, which we mainly use for ninhydrin, which is for porous items to get your possible latent fingerprints, which are basically like paper, cardboard, or brown paper bags. Uh, we also have a UV decontamination chamber. So every time we use one of our equipment, we put it in our decon chamber and it's a UV light so that it's not dirty for the next time that we use it. Here we have our chemical cabinet, which is basically all of our chemical products that we use for processing. Um, we have on the top here, this is for blood detection slash enhancement. We have varieties of different ones. We also um, do research for these to test it out and see if it helps us with our cases. And then we also have latents on porous surfaces, latents on any surfaces, and then we also have latents on non-porous surfaces. So we have a lot of chemicals, which we try from different companies to see which one works better with the different types of evidence that we have throughout the day in each case. This is where we use to process all of our evidence when it comes to uh, powders. And if it's chemicals, we'll put it under the uh, fuming duct hood over there. And then if we need to refill our stuff, we have our cabinets here with small latent tapes, large brushes, specialty powders, and other different type of chemicals that we use for processing. 
You wonder how we dry wet clothing, bloody clothing. Well, we have a drying chamber inside of our unit on the first floor where we put all of any wet clothing items in. Uh, there's lockers in here if there's multiple different cases of different crime scene investigators. So you can put your evidence inside the locker and right on the front side what case number it is, what kind of case, and then your name to emphasize that it's yours. So usually when we have wet clothing, it depends on how wet it is. If it literally just came from like a canal and someone was in there, uh, I would say approximately two to three days you wait for it to dry. But if it's something that's like mildly damp, we would do the next day to submit it into evidence. We're very grateful here at the Coral Springs Police Department that we have the latest technology which allows us to process evidence. Due to us having this latest technology, it allows us to process evidence efficiently and it also allows us to bring justice for the victims, which makes our community here at the city of Coral Springs a safer place. Thank you for joining us today on our lab tour. Please let us know in the comments what part of the lab tour was the best part for you.